Welcome back, everyone. We're now going to join FarmWise in the United States, which helps farmers save on costs using less chemicals and increase food production through robotic use. And for that, I've got Pauline Cantoner, who's with me, who's Head of Business Development and Partnerships. Can you see me? Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, fantastic. One, I just hand it over to you and you explain where we are. Wonderful. Okay, I'll just share my screen with you guys. All right, here we go. All right. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Pauline. I'm the head of business development and partnerships at FarmWise. Um, thank you for having us and uh, shout out to the organizing team for putting together such a great event. I hope to be in person next year with you all. Um, so quick intro about FarmWise. We are um, a five-year-old company based out of Salinas, California. For those of you who are not familiar with Salinas, it's where most of your lettuce and other green vegetables are most of the North American kind of green vegetable production is grown. Um, we also have several locations and I'll expand on that later. I do have a video for you but we'd love to give you guys um, a little bit of background about why we're in business and, and what we're doing in California and Arizona today beforehand. Um, so in FarmWise, we're in business to really help farmers transition um, towards more sustainable farming practices. Um, actually, it's nothing new. We'll, we've been hearing it all over throughout the conference. Um, you can see here on this photo, the way typical hen weeding, weed control is done um, post emergence. So once the crop has emerged out of the ground in the Salinas Valley, it's probably the same in Europe as well. Um, you would have crews of 15 to 25 people walking across the field, um, hen weeding with a hoe. Um, and so our first move at FarmWise to help alleviate some of that kind of, you know, regulatory and also kind of socio-demographic burden that's happening on, in, in the farming area today is to um, leverage AI and robotics um, to empower farmers with tools. And so our first product is an automated mechanical weeder. So here you are presented with Titan. This is the current generation that we're commercially operating. Um, Titan is both a diesel power tractor and what we call an implement, or you can call it an attachment, if you will. Under this hood on the right side, you can, that's where the magics happen. You have lights, cameras, and um, a set of, you know, movable blades and also fixed tools that um, are here to provide a full cleanup of the bed. And so we're, we're leveraging um, deep learning to, to detect crop crops from weeds, but we're not just doing kind of facial recognition for crops. Um, we're also kind of ident identifying the outer edge of the plant and locating the meristem. And that is super important because that allows us to really calibrate mechanical tools with a, with a higher degree of precision. Um, a few words about our business model. Today, we, are, we own a fleet of machines. Um, 14 of them, and we deploy them as a service. So uh, growers will contract with us um, for a fee per, a flat fee per acre. And in exchange, we take care of everything from um, transportation, operation, maintenance, um, and, um, and then bringing the robot back to the shed. Uh, and so that is really um, the way we are making money today as a company. Uh, we're not selling the equipment or anything like that. Um, and I'm super happy to expand later on on why we think this is an awesome way to bring the most value to our growers today, some of whom you can see in this orange bubble. Um, we have two service centers right now in operation in Salinas and Yuma, Arizona. Yuma kind of takes over the winter production of crops um, once Salinas is done. And that allows really the southwest of the United States to kind of grow lettuce year round, which is pretty amazing. Um, and so here comes a wonderful video for you and I'll do without sound so I can really tell you more about it. Hopefully you guys can see it relatively okay. Or can you? Yeah, awesome. Um, all right, that's Titan at work. 
on a romaine field out in proudly Salinas Valley. This is a crazy organic celery field. You can see the wheat pressure here is pretty high. Um, that's, that's the magic of the crop detection algorithm um, that you can see here. This is some cool visualization that our planner is offering um, that we like to show. Um, and so a bit more about the tools that we're using. So it's both um, what we call also weeding modules. So each essentially weeding modules overlook a row of crop and has two robotic arms that will open and close in front of the crop. So here you can see the purslane pressure is pretty high. Purslane is, is kind of a tricky weed to, to deal with because it's a succulent and it regrows really fast. So goal is really to like expose the root up to the surface so they can dry out um, and die. And so um, both tools that moves, you know, um, with several degrees of freedom on a bar. And then we have fixed tools that kind of offer a cleanup of the intra row. Um, and that allows, you know, a full cleanup of the bed. That's broccoli right here. Um, broccoli is a crop that's been kind of stellar for us this year. Um, it's awesome to see an automated weeder being able to tackle that because broccoli, just like celery, are crops that are planted at a higher density. Um, so you're looking at a 12 to 15 centimeter stem to stem versus, you know, your lettuce, it's probably 25 centimeters where we farm, um, where we work. And, and so being able to, you know, to locate the stem of each crop is obviously central um, in being able to weed those fields. And that's um, cauliflower, also super weedy, looks like my backyard. Um, and that's down near Santa Barbara, close to the ocean. All right, and I think this is probably the end of my video for you. There we go. Titan at 4.30 a.m. in the morning. And that's again a nice celery, celery field. Um, all right, so from now on, I just wanted to say a couple of words about stuff that are exciting for us right now and things that you know we want to we want to keep you know thinking about and expanding and um, deploying resources on data is one so if you understood me clearly so far we both build sophisticated technology but we are also an agricultural service provider so we have built a lot of internal tools to be able to offer you know, the great, great quality of service to our growers and to be able to operate that way. Um, so we have a lot of internal scheduling tools, um, stuff that allows us to keep track with maintenance of the robot, performance metrics of the robot, how much acreage we're covering and such. Um, obviously, we have real-time monitoring tool when the robot is in action out in the field. So here you can see kind of real what the real-time detection looks like for our teleoperations team. Um, and then in the end, we are collecting a lot of data to be able to do the job that we do every day, um, kind of crop level granular data, agronomic data, you may call them. Um, those are not rocket science thing here. I'm not talking about detecting mildew with multi-spectral camera. I'm really talking about crop counts, um, diameter, so size, um, spacing stem to stem spacing. Um, and we compute the stem, which is also called emergence because we're accounting for missing crops. And so we believe this data has power and we want to be able to repackage this data to farmers as an add-on to what we're doing today. So we're kind of exploring how can we you know, leverage those, those in kind of piece of information and what we can make out of it. And then I um, wanted to share a bit, a bit more about what's coming next for us. So. Um, next year, we'll be um, releasing the next generation of our products. Um, we are essentially really expanding into more regions and expanding our service throughout um, the Southwest and in new regions as well. And so here is Vulcan. Um, aside, you know, from the obvious design change that everybody will notice, we're uh, also really happy to you know, put forward uh, what we think is the best way to deliver on the three dimensions that you see here, uh, reliability, modularity, and, and ease of operations for our farmers. Um, so with that, I have another slide about the team. Uh, we have a great team of folks. I think um, 
What I love about my job is the capacity to be interacting with folks from, you know, all the way from machine learning people to um, really agricultural operation man from the Southwest. And um, we have so strong expertise in, in a lot of areas that allow us to be doing what we do today. And um, the, the journey it keeps going and it's, it's really awesome to see all the stuff that has happened this year, um, despite a crazy pandemic. Um, so yeah, thanks, thanks for listening. And if you have any question, I'll encourage you to reach out or you know, ask them now. Always happy to chat about what we're doing. Thanks so much. Thanks, Pauline. Um, do we have any questions from the audience here? Yeah, why don't you come up here? Since there's no microphones, so we just come on up. Here, take the power. <laughs> Hi, thanks for, thanks for that. I was just wondering about the operating hours. You said it's still running at 4 a.m., uh, so how long can it run for, start to finish? Yeah, so that's that's a great question. Um, today we um, essentially have our because we work in California, so you can imagine in the not even in the summer actually already in like March it can be pretty hot. So uh, we're having our guys start pretty early in the morning and finish um, you know mid afternoon. Um, we used to have two shifts. We only have one now. It really depends on like obviously like capacity, like how much. How much pressure do we have to finish certain fields and stuff? We do not do night operations. I think this is a possibility. Um, I mean, I've, I've listened earlier on, on a talk of certain companies who are doing night work because they have to, spraying companies. Uh, we're, we're not there yet. I think it requires a really big infrastructure to be able to um, you know, handle night operations. We have our people start early morning more for weather reasons and making the work, you know, a little more, you know, enjoyable uh, than walking in like really high temperature. Um, but we do, yeah, we operate the normal day, an eight hour day um, up to 12 if we have to, um, paying over time. Dependent on the human supervision rather than the robot itself then. Yeah, so we're not, um, autonomy has not been a focus of ours. Um, it's part of our roadmap, just like autonomous car are part of our future, us all here. Um, there are lots of companies working on that. And I think, you know, there are also the bigger players working on that as well. And, you know, we're very close from, from getting there. What we really wanted to focus on with, you know, we're a small company with focus is, you know, really important to what we do um, and being able to, uh, automate a very labor intensive process, which is weeding is what has been our focus. So automating a process rather than automating navigation, which is great. Um, and I think it's coming or it's already there in certain cases. But um, today we do rely on an operator. This operator is not just here to supervise the equipment. It, he's also here or she's also here to help with quality control um, and feedback. So again, we're commercially available, um, but having this kind of precious feedback loop has been key to improving the quality of um, weeding and of the service on it all. Okay, great, thank you. Um, thanks, and now we have a question as well, Pauline, online, a couple of questions. What's the weight of the Titan robot and the typical speeds per hectare per day? Okay, so funny, I think I've heard this question so many times during the conference and I remember to check it, but I'm not sure. Happy to get back to you on that. I know I have the number somewhere. All I know is that weight is not that, I'm not an engineer, but as far as I can tell, I don't think weight is that much important in terms of soil compaction. compaction. It's more like the force that's applied to the, to the soil. So PSI is what we should be looking at. And in my memory, Titan has a very comparable um, PSI applied to the soil compared to like a small tractor. Happy to get back with like clear number. Whoever is asking the question, shoot me an email, um, please. And in terms of output per hour, today we're doing an acre an hour. We're kind of flying on, on lettuce, which is great. Um, obviously when crops are closer to one another, we have to go slower in order to provide the highest quality possible. Um, and so yeah, 2.4 a hectare an hour if we're converting. Okay. Uh, you mentioned um, lettuce all year round. How do you do that? Is it with a, without a greenhouse? Yeah, it's it's climate. <laughs> so yeah, the first field of lettuce is probably planted on the last day of the year. 
and will be harvested in Salinas Valley, so really the central coast of California, early October, mid-October. And then that entire production is shifting towards Yuma in the south, which is less impacted by a harsher weather. So you will have you know, lettuce being in the ground already by end of August. And so they take over until February, until Salinas takes over. And that's, that's how you do it. And uh, how many human operators are needed to overlook the robots? Yeah, we have today one robot per machine. Um, would love to scale that and have one operator supervising two robots. Um, that, that would be fantastic. Okay, you mentioned PSI. Someone said many people won't know that PSI is pounds per square inch. Is that right? Oh, my God. You're not going to love that um, <laughs> European metric system, huh? Okay. Um, any other questions out here? Uh, we've got some questions still online, Pauline. So why don't you, if you can get onto the chat and maybe you can reply to those, right? Absolutely. Anytime. Okay. Okay, terrific. So um, thanks so much. I don't know what time it is over there. Actually, it's reasonable hours, right? About 11, 11 in the morning? No, 10 in the morning. Well, actually, uh, magic, movie magic. I am, um, I am in France right now oh, in okay. my, on cheating. my family farm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cheating. Um, okay, well, thank you so much for talking to us. And uh, do reply to some of those questions online. And thanks again for your presentation. Thank you. Much more coming up with my colleague Sophie and um, the